Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to the final review of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Now, after the horrendous review of the re of the of the of the, of the horrendous 2010 remake, I wanted to get that out of the way first because we'll end this on a good note for this franchise. The make up is so pissed off, you know. That's just, you know, my roof, my bed was all messed up because I was, like, tossing it and just, ugh. and it, and also it gave me a headache because as a guy who's named after a medicine, which is funny because I didn't take bear, I didn't have that to take for a headache, I used Tylenol. Yeah, Tylenol to treat my headache. Yeah. But I, this film just pissed me off, so I don't want to get into it. Just check out my, my big rant on that. But any other good note is that at least I have issues with the film though, but overall I do like the film still. And that is of course the end of the, on this is of Freddy vs. Jason. This is another film I wanted to review for a long time. Because now Freddy vs. Jason, this is a film that I was really excited for back in this uh, scene back in 2003. I think I was about, let's see here, 2018. So. 15 years ago. I was only 12. I was only 12 at the time when I saw Freddy vs. Jason. I remember it was me and my mom. We saw it together um, at the theater at the late at the late night showing for Freddy vs. Jason. I remember, and I was only I was only 12 at the time when I saw this. God, <laughs> a 12 year old to see a brutal slash film like this. But hey, I grew up with I grew up with Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees, so. And I remember, I remember there was a lot of hype for going, uh, for this film. You know, these two iconic horror legends for this big showdown, and it was, there was a lot of hype for this film, because, because you know, because after you know, with the, at the end of um, uh, Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday, well, at the end where Freddy, Freddy, Krueger, Freddy Krueger, his claw, his razor uh, blade glove comes up and pulls Jason's mask to 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 hell, right where he was from. So there was a, there was a lot there was a lot of going a lot, a lot of stuff going going on going on behind the scenes and all this stuff for to make of this film. So and there was a, there was a whole bunch of story ideas behind this. And honestly, this is the only this is the only best way in this film where we for what we got was the best idea that they can come up with because the other ones were like so like weird and silly and it was just like what. But like uh, looking up, um, there was there there were, I think there was one idea that were they had Jason on trial. I'm like Jason on a trial. What what what? So a guy who's like a guy who's like killed like dozens and dozens of people. What was he what was he do do on trial anyway? Oh Jason Voorhees. Yeah, you killed like how many years? He's killed how many people? Oh, we sent you to death. Really. <laughs> Yeah, how many times they try to kill him an axe to the face or get him blown up and oh but how can you get more than that? That's so that was like a silly idea. Having him trial and then there were I guess there was like oh, I guess there was another idea that like there was another idea that involved the Holy Grail. I guess there was like kids looking for a holy grail or something like that and it was like I don't know what was going on with this. It was like this it was like other ideas and just like that and I don't know. It was just all these ideas were just it was just so so silly and, and just yeah, that's the word for it, silly. And it didn't work. And there was just like a cult or whatever, or like for Freddy, or like or worse Freddy. I don't know what this. If <laughs> yeah, Freddy cult, this is that's what I would say. But just, I, I think this is, this, with the film we got right now, I think this is the best way to put it. Okay, how it opens up. Robert England comes back. Comes back as Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger. Well, I, and uh, this is both, this is his last, this, this was the last time to play, when he played for Freddy Krueger. But, um, I actually look it up. You know, the, the, the sick, the comedy sitcom, The Goldbergs. He says that Robert England's gonna make an appearance as Freddy Krueger on an episode called 
it's a reference to Nightmare on Elm Street. It's called Nightman on Elk Street or something like that. That's the name of the episode of of the upcoming episode for the Goldbergs. And this is supposed to come out on Halloween. And Robert Englund comes back once again as Freddy Krueger in appearance. So yeah. I thought that that's kind of cool. Hey, Robert Englund once again in Freddy Krueger makeup and all that stuff. I'll watch that. I never watched I never watched the Goldbergs, but just to see for the for, for Robert Englund, I will give that a look to see Robert Englund once again as Freddy Krueger. But at this time, at this time before all that, at this time of day, this is the last time he played Freddy Krueger before before all that. Though I'm saying. But um, and for and for the time Robert England once again he did a does a really uh, great job as Freddy Krueger, once again. And to Ken Kersner, who plays Jason Voorhees, because most of the time uh, before that it was Kane Hodder who played from from Part Seven all up to Jason X, and um, and I mentioned before in in uh, um, Ken Kersner. He, um, in Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, Ken Kurzer, he plays as the cook, uh, when Jason, he breaks the walls in that diner, and Ken, this big cook, tries to stick a finger in, in Jason's face, like, you, you, whoever, and Jason just throws the guy against the wall. That's Ken Kurzer from Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. He plays Jason Voorhees in this. <laughs> I'm sure it's a run, it's, I'm sure it's a run joke, you know, uh, you know, King Hodder. Oh, you're trying to take my place. That's why I throw you against the wall. <laughs> but um, I Ken Kersner, he's still all right. He's all right. I think to me that does say he's still as all right as Jason. Kane Hodder is always to be the always be the best best of Jason Voorhees. Um, but the whole story is that um, Freddy Krueger. We get homages from all the previous Elm Street films. How we how all the characters how he was being defeated. So it's connect. So the um, it shows that Elm Street films are connected with this film because it shows all the clips from him, how he was defeated and all that. And basically, and he's in hell right now. And um, everyone has forgotten who he was, so he can't install fear because without fear to give him his power, he can't do anything. So yeah, so everyone's forgot about him. He's powerless at the moment. So he has an idea. To make people to make people remember him, and so he brings back Jason, and he's like like a, like a, a dream of Jason where he kills us one of the like, at Camp Crystal Lake and one of the counselors, and his mother, which they wanted um, oh, what was it who played I forget who played a uh, uh, Pamela Voorhees. Um, th this one is pa it's uh, Paula Shaw who played who plays Mrs. Voorhees. But, um, uh, the other one who, uh, Betsy Palmer. They, I say they wanted Betsy Palmer to come back as, as Mrs. Voorhees in this, but I guess she said no, I guess. Which is too bad. Because that, that would, that would, that would have made it canon to the other, uh, part, uh, um, to the, to the other Friday the 13th films, because of, you know, the first one and all that, and the second one too. But it was too bad, but I think, well, back then she wanted she was in before. I know she, she said she's now passed on though, but all the films she's done before she passed away, I guess she could have, you know, because it seemed like she wasn't that busy at the time. I guess, but well, so if Ray impersonates his mother, makes him go to Elm Street, you know, because he wants to install the fear to make him think that when Jason kills, they want people to think it's Freddy Krueger coming back to install the fear. So. So, uh, Jason Voorhees goes to Elm Street, and that's another thing with the that's one now one issue I have with the film is the is the cast of characters in this film. Well, besides Robert England, Ken Kersner, the other like the teenagers, fear fear leads. You got Monica Kina, who is uh, who is the girl's name? Uh. Um. Lori, it's me. Lori, um, she she was she was not that good of a, of a lead. Well, I would say I would definitely put her above Rooney Mara from the 2010 remake of Nightmare on Elm Street, because she's the worst. She was the worst. But 
yeah, I would say she's better than Bruni Mara, but still, she was not that she was not that good at all. So I'm sorry on that one, but so she was not that good though. Then you got uh, Jason Ritter, son of act of, of of actor John Ritter. I'm I miss John Ritter though, but um, his son Jason. Sad to say that he was he's not that he he didn't do much to impress me sadly. So in this film he didn't well. Because also it's directed by it's directed by Ronnie Yu, who um going who before this he directed Bride of Chucky, which John Ritter starred in. And it was sad to see him die in Bride of Chucky, being first nails to the face and then stabbed by Chucky. It was sad to see how John Ritter sad to see John Ritter die like that though. But I guess Ronnie Yu wanted to use his son, I guess, in this film. J Jason Ritter, he didn't he was he was not a good of the lead of lead either. Um, Kelly Rollin, I think she was, uh, the, well, she, she plays one of the, the lead girl's friend, um, Kia. They got, uh, what was in this cast here? Uh, Christopher George Markeith. He's one of the friends. And so, the whole, the whole lot of characters... The, of the of the teenage characters were, was was not a good of a casting, so that's one issue is the cast. Besides Robert England and, and Ken Kersner. so the cast was not was not good. Um, oh, there's another guy uh, who plays uh, Jason Ritter's friend in the film, uh, Brendan Fletcher. He was the kid in um, the uh, goose the episodes of Goosebumps with the Werewolf of Fever Swamp. Um, Grady was the guy as the kid's name. The yeah Goosebumps, the Werewolf of Fever Swamp. That that was Brendan Fre Fletcher. He's in this. And he was also in Air Bud too, as one of the other kids on the basketball team. So, that's another one. Other character, um, no. But uh, they're at the, they're at the house, and guess what? Well, other girl, I guess she like smokes and drinks, and she has like this douchebag of a boyfriend. You know, after they make it out on the bed, and she takes a shower. The guy is like, the guy is in bed still. And okay, I'll, I'll give another good thing. The, the, the kills in this are pretty cool in this one, for for a couple of them. Like for the the, the douchebag boyfriend, he's in bed. Jason's right there. He turns on the bed. Then Jason just stabs him repeatedly like twenty times, and he just literally just folds the bed up. And the guy folds bends backwards too. So that was a cool death. That was that was definitely a cool death. Just stabs him like twenty times repeatedly, and then just literally just folds the bed up with him in it. And then the authorities think that it's Freddy Krueger that's doing it, and the the kids are wondering who's Freddy Krueger. And then Jason Ritter, who's the Malkina's a uh, boyfriend, he was locked up in the, I think that's the same sanatorium, the insane asylum that was from Part Three, the the Dream Warriors, I I believe. I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was it was the same. It's the same one because like it's the same universe. Yeah, I'm very sure it's the same insane asylum. Because cause he was accused of, you know, of uh, the lead's, lead girl's mom death, you know, her, her death. So the father had him put away. And his friend, Brendan Fletcher, is there. They get out, they uh, they get out, of the, they escape from the asylum. And um, then you get this other guy, um, another another bloody scene where um, this other guy who was with the douchebag boyfriend... He falls asleep, he, like, he falls asleep, and Freddy Krueger is there. He tries to get him, though, but he's not strong enough yet. And, once again, Robert England does a really great job. <coughs> ah, sorry. Um, especially, the, also, the, the make, I like, um, how Freddy Krueger looks, you know, the makeup effects as well. I also like the makeup effects in him in this one. And he's just, you know, it's like this, I think I'll have Jason have a little fun. And so that guy wakes up, and his dad is next to him. He touch, uh, shakes him. The guy's head just pops off, and just pfft, blood pursing out. And although this one, this one's questionable because Jason's right there, and the guy kind of uses his dad's head as a shield. Well, you don't see it though, but it cuts away, just cuts like a splur of blood all over the wind, all over the window. And it looks like this one was very bloody, and it definitely has the blood and gore in this film. That was like questionable. I mean, you could have shown it though. It just like the guy was using his the, his father's head as a shield, and it cuts away to just blood, basically blood being thrown on the wall, on the window. 
So everyone at the school, they're questioning what's going on, and like the guy, Brendan Fletcher, he's like the smart guy. He probably knows. He probably knows what's going on. So then there is the cuts this uh, rave in this cornfield, and the girl who's like the smoke and drink who had the abusive like the douchebag boyfriend, she falls asleep. And when she's falling asleep in this middle in this section of the field, there's this guy who has like a bunch of glow sticks. But sees an opportunity with the, when she's asleep, just goes up and just basically just you know tries to make it with her. And in the dream, Freddy Krueger, he's going after her. But sadly, though, he was just when he was about to strike, Jason gets in his way and in, in the real world, he impales the glow stick guy along with her with his long pipe, and Jason just throws him with the pipe, the glow stick guy away, throws him away, and she disappears from the drink as she got killed in the real world by Jason, and he's like, no, she's mine, mine, so now he's pissed, and then these two other guys, like one guy in a CG, in a CG effect, just, Jason just twists the guy's head other way around, the guy throws liquid stuff on him, sets him on fire, it's a good stunt effect. Which I think Ken Kirsner, he is. A, I think he's. I think he is a stunt guy. I think. I know Kane Hodder does his own, and all the previous ones he does his own stunts. But I think the Kane Ken Kirsner, I think he's also a stunt guy as well. <coughs> but it's a good how uh, the guys is how uh, Jason is is on fire. It's a good of uh, real 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 person on fire, not CGI, like in the badly piss poor CGI when Fred Krueger was running out of the building in the 2010 remake. In you know the dream sequence when he was being burned alive, he comes running out in bad CGI fire. Here it's actually done for real and it's a very well done stunt. So the guy runs through. The guy, Jason's on fire. He throws the machete through him, and he's just and then Jason he's just going ape shit crazy. He's just hacking and slashing people left and right, and he's just, like killing people. He's like <laughs> he's just going crazy in this in this in that one scene. And what, then there was there's this one deputy that knows it wasn't it's not Freddy, but the sheriff is like, no, we don't we don't mention his name at all. We know what we're doing. But that one deputy, he's like kind of like the he's like, kind of like a new deputy. He talks with to the teens. He knows he talks about that it's it's Jason Borg. He's from Camp Crystal Lake, and they had to go to that. Uh, um. They want to go to go to that that asylum where Jason Ritter was at. Uh, before that, though, uh, Monica, Kina, and Jason Ritter they had to get help from their friend uh, from uh, Mark. That was Brendan Brendan Fle Brendan Fletcher's character's name, Mark. He falls asleep. He's his dead brother. They kind of like committed suicide, but Jason, but Freddy's using his uh, using his voice to talk to the guy. And then the guy, um. He's like screaming, "Wake someone, wake me up!" and and then Freddy uh, just tosses him to the wall and insists the guy's back on fire to send him a message. And that's the only that's the only kill that uh, Freddy Krueger kills in this movie. In this movie, Brendan Fletcher. That's the only guy that he kills. He sets his back on fire and then leaves a message. Freddy's back. So they go to the asylum because um like oh, they 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 need hypnosil stuff that makes them not dream. And which, which I mentioned in my review in of uh, part three, and I'm also part three, the Dream Warriors. That's that's been brought up. So that came from, that came from part three, the Dream the Dream Warriors, because the doctor, um, Doctor Gordon, he, he mentioned hypnosil because it was a it was a test drug for our, our Dream Warriors not to dream. So it was nice that they brought that into this, because there is hypnosil in this. So they want to try to get us get that, their hands on that stuff. And the one guy who was like, basically, he's a, he's a druggie, you know, smokes pot. And actually, I, I ever, and uh, looking up more, that guy who plays, what was the name? Who was, who was smokes pot, or what was the guy's name? Uh, Bill the, uh, uh, Freeberg, is the guy's name. And his name, name is Kyle Labbin. <laughs> like how Kyle Gallagher, Gal Gallagher in 2010 Remake. <laughs> Liz, this guy, here's another guy, his name is Kyle. But, uh, that guy, Freeberg, that's a, that was a kid from, 
like another a kid from uh, actor from Goosebumps, like Brendan Fletcher was in the Werewolf of Thera Swamp. That kid, that guy, he was the kid Evan in Monster Blood Part One, and then more Monster Blood Part Two on the plane. That's the kid Evan. I was like, oh, so you got two actors from 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 the Goosebumps show. So you got one from Werewolf, of, one from Werewolf of Thera Swamp, and you got another one from Monster Blood Part One and Part Two. Okay. <laughs> Well, that guy who plays Freeberg, he was good in, in the Monster Blood Part 1, Part 2 here, but he's just a smoke pot, pot wacko, whatever he is. And then, and then you get, a, a, I would say, another bad effect where he looks, the door opens, and you see Freddy Krueger as this badly CGI caterpillar. I mean, in Part, in part 3, the Dream War, no, actually, yeah, it was Part 3, the Dream War, it was, he was this... It was this well-done practical effect of him as a snake trying to eat uh, Patricia Arquette. Here he's a he's a bad CGI caterpillar smoking a bong, a bong, yeah. And then then next thing you know he go gets in the guy's mouth and possesses him. It, people make people make fun of I mentioned I mentioned before people make fun of part two about you know Freddy possessing uh, Jesse you know Mark Patton in part two, but this one is any better. A bad, except for how he's possessing Jason, uh, Jesse in part two, especially when he kills his friend Grady, a well done effect where he's getting, coming out of his body, well done effects. Here, just a CGI cavern goes in the guy's mouth and, possess, and possesses him. People make fun of, people call part two laughable, especially the whole character of Jesse. I disagree. That was, la this is laughable. So yeah, he, 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 he possesses him, dumps all the medicine down the drain, and then Jason comes in, he kills the deputy, like, he gets electrocuted, and he holds onto the guy, so he can get electrocuted, too. Oh, by the way, he kills, he kills the security guard, lame death, though, just knocks a door on top of him, you see CGI blood coming out as the guy is on the floor. Um, chases after him, uh, Freddy possessing the guy, Freeberg, he has some, another type of drug to make him sleep, Is like, you know, Jason's like, um, he's coming, uh, Jason Ritter is like, come on, and in, for, in Freddy's voice, like, let me handle this bitch. Come to Freddy. These are my children, Jason. Go back to where you belong, and checks him just in time, then Jason goes and splits that guy in half. Um, so they tie him up, and they take him to Camp Crystal Lake, and then he get a part of the showdown in Jason's dream, where... And he gets a, it's it's a it's a fun it's a fun little fight. It is I will say it is a, when I first saw this it was a fun when I first saw this back in the back in two thousand three in the theater it was a fun fight to me. Where he for makes for makes things he chopped Freddy's arms off he's like not my arm ha <laughs> ha and then he's just he's just playing with he's just playing with Jason he's like ha mm. catches the machete throws him against the wall he's like welcome to my nightmare. Just pit, keeps on hitting him, takes the, his own machete against him, and then he's like, oh, scary. Ha 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 And then, I will say now that now today it is silly though, but back then I was kind of, I find it funny, but today I know it's silly where he's using Jason as, you know, he's imitating of a pinball machine. You hear pinball sound effects, he's doing like this, and you hear pinball sound effects. He's like, aw, tilt. I will say that it is that is very silly. I will say that though. Would, but back then, I was having fun with the fight though. But I'll get more leniency into it. But I know I won't. I will not defend that scene though because it is silly. I will say that though. But back then, I'll. I did find that fun though. But I'll just give a little bit of leniency on it though. But I will say it is still silly to this day. And then, then you get this thing where he where he breaks a pipe and water's right in front of him and. Jason stops and why? Oh, I guess I, I guess old because he he doesn't like water and Freddy doesn't like fire, you know, yin and yang, right? But there's a lot of times where if he's afraid of water, how come he, all the other times in the other previous sequels, like part like part four or uh, part six, he is in the lake. So why was, he wasn't afraid of water when he was in that in those? So how is he afraid of water in this? So that didn't make any sense. 
But, uh, well, I guess because, like, you know, how Freddy doesn't like fire, and and I guess, say, Jason doesn't like water. So he put digs deeper, and Monica Kina is Laurie. She goes to make you sleep in his dream. I guess she transferred her dreams to him so they can be in the same dream with him. And they at Camp Crystal Lake when Jason was a kid, being mocked of, uh, being mocked and tossing the river, the lake. Jason and uh, Freddy's trying to drown him. And um they wake up and Jason gets thrown from the from the van. Freddy gets pissed and tries to get uh, Lori, but it's back at her house. And she actually sees that it was Freddy Krueger who killed her mother. And uh, her dad was trying to cover it up. And then he pulls, and then he pulls um Freddy out in the real world, like from in the original. Well, like 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 in uh, the first film, and like in um. Um, Freddy said the final nightmare, pulling him out into the real world. And then, then you get the real good, uh, fight where, um, <laughs> well, actually, um, first the one, the one guy, Linderman is the guy's name, he gets put, hit back and he gets hit on a spike and he just bleeds to death. Because he can he kind of liked the girl Kia, but he bleeds to death, so it's a lame death. So I will say. And, like, Jason... He, he, he beats Freddy, like, he throws him, he drags him out the window, and just drags him all the way across the, against the wall, breaking more windows, and just tosses him through another roof. And, like, the other girl, Kia, she's, like, talking to Freddy, and he's, like, doing this, pointing, like, behind her. She just gets slashed by Jason, tossed all the way across, and hits a tree. And then this is where you get the real, the real fight begins. Because, you know, just, Freddy, he's just, just, Hitting him, kicking him, doing like a get like an elbow to the head, and and he gets like these like these tanks like man the torpedoes. It's hit one after the other, hits Jason. This now this is a this is this is what the the war the wait has been um the fight you've been waiting for this big showdown between Frey versus Jason. Like you know the, the, the tanks and then Frey's like hey asshole up here. He gets these rod, these metal rods. He gets impaled by a couple of them. Has this little thing that swings, hitting him. He tries to get this like this big sand cart, and he gets stuck. And he's like, "Oh, give me a break!" But he gets, but he gets knocked off. His foot gets caught in the swinging things. Like, and he's hey, going towards Jason. He's like, "Oh no, oh no!" <laughs> and then they get tossed onto the onto the deck. F Jason gets a couple of slashes at Freddy. But then Freddy cuts up the tips of his fingers off, and Jason's like this. And then he gets the machete. He starts hacking him with uh, Jason with it, and he like gouges his like his eyes, but he can still see. So he must he must not have got his his eyes fully, but still he's uh, he's able to see. <laughs> and excuse me, I guess I, still got, I, still, I guess I still got a lift from that rant I just did. But um, but it's nothing against this movie. I still, I still this is, this film is a lot better than the remake, a lot better. And then the girl, you know, gets these uh, flaming sticks because they spraying gas, and he goes, "Freddy, go to hell!" And Jason just punches right into Freddy and rips his arm off. It's it's really bloody and it's brutal. Just it is like. Gives you get a score. It's like just it keeps on pushing. Like these two are going at each other still. Like he gets his arm ripped off, and Freddy's still putting the machete into into Jason. It's just it's just these two seeing these two characters and this very bloody fight, very vicious and bloody fight. It's just really for as for horror for horror fans, it's really pleasing to see that for me especially, especially to other uh, horror fans. And. Then the, the deck explodes and you get this really and you get this good uh, fire stunt. The two stunt doubles set of flames as them being tossed into the lake. I think they um won an award for that uh, double fire stunt and it was a well done fire stunt. They just get blown back into the lake while the both of them are on fire. Well done stunt effect. And then 
They think they think they're safe, but then one of them walks up to them. You think it's Jason, but it's Freddy still holding the machete. He goes, "You," and then uh, Jason sticks his uh, right arm that has his glove hand, his razor glove, and sticks it right through him like this, and he falls in the water. And then uh, Monica Kina, who says that line, which they stole in the remake, where that Rooney, Mar Rooney Mara said, but very shitty. She says, "Welcome to my world, bitch," and just cuts his head off. In the shitty remake, she says, like, you're in my world, bitch, and just slits Freddy's throat. Very poorly done. Here, head, Freddy gets his head cut off. And they get out, and um, the, in the morning, Jason uh, pops up. He walks up with holding Freddy's head. And then you see uh, Freddy, Freddy looking at the camera, winking. Laughing. So, I did. Oh, I did. I did like that though. When just he goes like this. Hey, because if I, you never know. So who who can win? Probably still ends. I was still ends that draw. If you think that Freddy is, is still alive after that. But yeah, I still I still enjoy Freddy vs Jason, even despite the issues. Like the cast is is not that great at all. Um, some of the deaths, a couple of the deaths were lame, but um. But uh, what what else was there? There was other nitpicks as well. Was oh yeah, the, some of the bad some of the bad CG effects, like I mentioned. Uh, let's see here. A score by uh, who the score? Graham Ravel. I know he's done. I've done a couple of movie reviews that that that, that has scores done by Graham Ravel. I think it was I think it was still fine. But um. The cast was not that great, though, but, uh, Ken Kersner, he was all right, still all right as Jason Voorhees, but Kane Hodder was much better. I wish he had come back, though, but I guess he said no. Or studio probably told him no, probably, I don't know. We'll hold by that, but, but Robert Englund, the high, definitely the highlight, highlight of the film. Once again, a great performance he did as Freddy Krueger. I'd like, that's what I like to see, still, he was still cracking some jokes, still. I, I did like that, some, a lot of lines he says. Ronnie Yu, I would say I I still like this better than than Bride of Chucky. I just I've I've, I've grown to like the film less, but I think Freddy vs Jason is better than Bride of Chucky still. Because hey, I I saw this back in when I was twelve back in two thousand three, so I had a fun time seeing this with my mother. Back in the theater for during the late night showing we saw. Back then, because that's why I still have fun with him. Because back then, I, for a twelve-year-old kid, for me, seeing a brutally violent film like this, because hey, I want hey I, and he also remember I I I had the poster hung up somewhere. I think it was over here. He saw me had the poster of that film. Because because hey, growing up, you know, we were all excited to see these two fighting together, and we did get that. The third act of the showdown was definitely worth the wait. Whether in, in Jason's dream and on the real world as well. And then, oh, it's free. And for years, sadly, well, though, we're never going to get, though. For years, people have been wanting to see a Freddy vs. Jason 2. For years. And they wanted to involve Ash, you know, Ash from um, Bruce Campbell from Evil Dead. I would like to see that. Hey, he, if Ash took on all these demons and stuff, you know, and, you know, swallow this. Pfft. Groovy. How would I to see that with I guess Freddy vs. Jason? I would like to see that. But so though we're it's it's years it's fifteen years after this film came out. Yeah, fifth fifth actually yeah, fifteenth anniversary, two thousand three, two thousand eighteen. So yeah, fifteenth anniversary. Can't believe that. Like I said I was I said it was twelve at the time, so but it's it was fifteen years later, we're never gonna see a Freddy vs. Jason two, Sally. We're never gonna see it. No much how, how much the horror fans want one. But um, what other stuff? Like the uh, um, but we're never gonna, we're never gonna see a Sally though. But this the cat and the the behind the scenes. I'm glad I'm glad we finally got you. I finally got a film where these two are together. For horror fans, we're glad we got a film that these two came crossed over with each other. 
I mean, the ideas, like, from the beginning, like I mentioned, were silly, though. But I'm glad I found with this where Jason, he's forgot, or Freddy, he's been forgotten, so he needed to still have more fear, so he brings back Jason. But Jason gets in his way, He Freddy gets pissed, and they fight each other. The whole thing with Jason on trial and the whole Grail idea is dumb and silly. This is a much better story. Um, score by Graham Reville was fine. Um, let's see here the, how much how much long is this? Can't find the time on this, but it was well paced. I would say it wasn't that bad. Um, and now this is this is a, this is a two disc edition. I and I, I liked um one disc. It's Freddy. And the other one is um uh, Jason, but uh, as it has features, has uh, has features on on both the on the disc first disc has a commentary with director Ronnie Yu, Ken Kersner, and Robert England. On uh, disc two, we have deleted and alternate endings. Like the alternate the alternate ending for this though is when uh, Jason Ritter and Kid are together in bed, and Jason Ritter has like the claw marks. That was the alternate uh, ending. Uh, with also the film commentary. It's behind the scenes coverage, the film's development, including the screenwriting, set design, makeup, stunts, and principal photography, visual effects, exploration, storyboards, original trailers, TV spots, and the music video by El Nino. How can I live? So that's features. It's a good two disc edition. But yeah. Frey vs. Jason. I still enjoy the film. Uh, being a, like a, a basically a child film, basically, and I was like I said, I was twelve when I saw it, and it was a good for being for twelve at the time. It was a good theater experience to see these two come together. I will still say that Robert England, once again, greatest Freddy Krueger. He always will be. Jack Harrow Haley, whatever. He just just that one. Never want to mention that one again. But you can check out my rant on that. That's why I did that first. Cause I want to end. I want to end this series on a good note. So, with the one true Freddy Krueger. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed my my reviews on this whole, on the Nightmare on Elm Street series. Hope you enjoyed that. And yeah, it's been a long ride. So, but hope you enjoyed my my. It's a good way to start off a uh, Halloween month. Last year I did the Friday Thirteenth films, so and I finally got the chance to do this. So yeah, Robert England. I mean, once again, he's iconic, classic, a legend in the horror, uh, in the horror industry. He'll always be the one true Freddy Krueger. And, and I hope you enjoyed my review on the Nightmare on Elm Street films. And also, like I mentioned, it's Freddy vs. Jason. I was that's why I decided to review this because this, this was more of a film about Freddy because he, he he opened it up and he wanted to brought back Jason. So he want he wanted to take out Jason. That's why I always I mentioned before this is this is a film that's about more about Freddy than Jason. Even though Jason got all the kills except for one that Kruger did, but still, this is story wise is mostly about Freddy. But yeah, but hope you enjoyed my my, my review of the series of Nightmare on Elm Street films. Thanks for watching and stay tuned wherever comes for more on Halloween Halloween month later. And one two or nine ten never sleep again.